Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the seventh weekend of Easter. Today, we celebrate communion again during the context of our service. And so, if you could have bread or wine or juice available for that, that would be helpful. Also, it would be helpful for you to have a candle that you can light. And right now, we are going to light the candles, remembering that again, even in the midst of a pandemic, Jesus is the light of the world. During the midst of crisis, we often forget who we are. For us who are Christians, who we are is found first in the waters of baptism. In the waters of baptism, we are joined with Jesus. We die with him and are raised again with him. In the waters of baptism, we are claimed and named by God. Claimed and named as children of God. Who are we in the midst of crisis? We are are God's children. And today we remember the waters of baptism. We are joined with Christ. We died with Christ. And in the baptismal waters we were raised again. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and for lakes and for streams and for rain and for snow and for dew. You are below us, above us, beyond us, around us. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for the waters that save us. Praise to you that Israel walked through the waters. Praise to you that the Samaritan woman discovered life again at the well. Praise to you for all the ways that water nourishes us. We do not give you thanks, however, God, for the waters of the floods. And as we gather today, we are mindful of those who have been harmed by water. And we pray, O God, that these waters may recede and that your sense of order may be returned to the people of Midland and other places throughout Michigan. We pray these things in the name of the one who went into the waters and yet came out of them. Amen. Our opening song today is uh, Blessing and Honor. Blessing and Honor. Blessing or honor, glory to the Lamb, holy, righteous, worthy is the Lamb. Death could not hold him down, for he is risen, seated upon the throne.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for yet another day, a day of life, a day of your grace, a day of remembering who we are in you. Help us to trust that, God, so that we might live out of who we are and that so that we might live in unity with all other people and with the entire cosmos. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody, especially the children who are watching. I have to tell you, kids, I certainly miss being with you. Uh, Sadie, I miss your presence. I miss the way you enjoy the songs that we sing. And I, yes, I miss the great hugs you give. And Megan, I miss your smiles. I miss you all. Um, but we are still together via technology, and I am uh, grateful for that. This weekend is in the ch not in the church, but in the rest of the culture around the church. Uh, we celebrate what's called Memorial Day. When I was a kid, when I was your age, my mom and dad would take me to the cemeteries, the places where our relatives were buried, relatives who had died, and we would work on the graves. We would decorate the graves. We would remember. Memorial Day is all about remembering. Remembering people who have died, and especially remembering people who have died in war. And when we remember people who have died in war, we have to be sad, because it's a tr it is very, very sad that people can't seem to get along, and they have to fight, and they end up dying in war. Sometimes people who die in war have given their lives for the sake of some bigger cause like their country. And so this weekend, we remember those who have sacrificed, those who have done great things for other people. I don't know if you know what that word sacrifice means, but it means sometimes putting aside yourself for the sake of somebody else. You know, right now we're putting masks on. We're putting masks on. Now why? It's a little, it's a small sacrifice for the sake of other people. What we know is that sometimes putting a mask on maybe not keep us as healthy as we'd like, but it will keep other people from getting anything we might have. So we sacrifice and we put on a mask. We in the church talk about a great sacrifice. And here I have one of my favorite, what's called a crucifix. It's a picture, it's, a, it's something that has Jesus on uh, a cross. And... We remember with this crucifix that Jesus sacrificed. He loved so much. He was thinking about other people that he, his life was given up on the cross. Sacrifice is what we who are the followers of Jesus are asked to do. To let go for the sake of other people. Now I want you to keep watching because now you're going to watch a video about the many people in our time who are sacrificing for our sake. Praise be the nurses and doctors, every medical staff bent over flesh to offer care, for lives saved and lives lost, for showing up either way. Praise for the farmers tilling soil, planting seeds so food can grow, an act of hope if ever there was. Praise be the janitors and garbage collectors, the grocery store clerks and the truck drivers barreling through long, quiet nights. Give thanks for bus drivers, delivery persons, postal workers, and all those keeping an eye on water, gas, and electricity. Blessings on our leaders making hard choices for the common good, offering words of assurance. Celebrate the scientists working a way to understand the thing that plagues us to find an antidote, and all the medicine makers. Praise be the journalists keeping us informed. 
Praise be the teachers, finding new ways to educate children from afar and blessings on parents holding it together for them. Blessed are the elderly and those with weakened immune systems, all those who worry for their health. Praise for those who stay at home to protect them. Blessed are the domestic violence victims on lockdown with abusers, the homeless, and refugees. Praise for the artists and poets, the singers and storytellers, all those who nourish with words and sound and color. Blessed are the ministers and therapists of every kind, bringing words of comfort. Blessed are the ones whose jobs are lost who have no savings, who feel fear of the unknown gnawing. Blessed are those in grief, especially who mourn alone. Blessed are those who have passed into the great night. Praise for police and firefighters, paramedics, and all who work to keep us safe. Praise for all the workers and caregivers of every kind. Praise for the sound of notifications, messages from friends reaching across the distance. Give thanks for laughter and kindness. Praise be our four-footed companions with no forethought or anxiety, responding only in love. Praise for the seas and rivers, forests and stones who teach us to endure. Give thanks for your ancestors, for the wars and plagues they endured and survived. Their resilience is in your bones and your blood. Blessed is the water that flows over our hands and the soap that helps keep them clean each time a baptism. Praise every moment of stillness and silence so new voices can be heard. Praise the chance at slowness. birds who continue to sing the sky awake each day. Praise for the primrose poking yellow petals from dark earth. Blessed is the air clearing overhead so one day we can breathe deeply again. And when this has passed, may we say that love spread more quickly than any virus ever could. We say this was not just an ending, but also a place to begin. Good morning. We will begin today with the lesson out of the book of Acts. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And he replied, this is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing upward toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, 
as well as his brothers. And now the gospel reading according to our Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you have gave For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I come from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on the behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This ends the reading of our gospel. Good morning. My name is Paula Dussel J, and I'm the pastoral intern at First Lutheran. And today is Ascension Sunday, that time in between where the reality of the resurrection has been fulfilled and where the Pentecostal promise of the Holy Spirit is coming. It is the time where Jesus will no longer appear in physical presence to the disciples, and it is the time when the disciples passionately wonder if the future they had hoped for and dreamed of was at hand. Is this the time, they asked Jesus, when the kingdom of Israel will be restored? Is this the time when God's vision for justice and peace for all peoples will become a reality? Is this the time? Now, this certainly is a valid question coming from the disciples. After all, Jesus had proclaimed the coming reign of God on multiple occasions. And this proclamation meant good news for the poor, and it meant liberation for the captives. And they had hung around Jesus long enough for they themselves to develop an ache in their hearts and a hunger and a thirst for the least of them. Theologian William Loder says, but yet the poor of Galilee remained poor. The people were not liberated. The hungry were still hungry. The brokenhearted were still brokenhearted. The weeping still wept. So the longing that these disciples felt when asking this question of the Lord spoke volumes about their time with Jesus. You see, there was still pain and confusion and hatred in the world they inhabited, and they hoped justice was in sight. Their expectations of the timing of the Lord's presence were real. Jesus had declared that God's kingdom was at hand. 
But when? Was this the time? Now, I wasn't quite sure what to do with Jesus' response to his disciples. Peterson's Message Bible says, He told the disciples, You don't get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. You know, when I say I didn't know what to do with this response, I didn't quite understand what Jesus, the Lord, was saying. Or perhaps I may have been reading more into the text than what was really there. But I essentially felt like, oh, come on, Lord. You can't let the disciples in on the timing of things when this will change the world. And you're going to leave them? Leave them with the Holy Spirit? And you're not going to be around for the long haul? You see, I don't like not knowing when things will or will not change. I don't like not being in control. I don't like the powerlessness of not being in control. It's those unknown pieces and passage of time that unsettle me and perhaps give me the illusion of control while I am waiting for life to unfold, especially, especially when life is hard and isolation is a reality. And I don't know about you, but the unknowns in this world, the time of waiting for things to be different, create confusion and doubt, and sometimes it's easy to lose hope. That powerlessness can also create a sense of defeat. And I'll be honest with you, watching the pain and suffering and devastation in the world right now from the confines of my home is isolating. And so with that powerlessness of not knowing when things are going to change, there comes this sense of helplessness. Is this the time, Lord? 2,000 years later, the poor are still poor. The hungry are still hungry as they wait in food distribution lines for hours every week. The marginalized are still dying at alarming rates. We are still weeping for loved ones with devastating diagnoses. Refugees still live in oppression. Peace is still a distant hope in many corners of the world, and people are still reeling from catastrophic events that have taken everything that was familiar to them. And the brokenhearted? Well, the brokenhearted are still brokenhearted. And while he, the Lord, was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them and they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you, will come again. And just like that, the physical appearance, the physical presence of the one who had taught the disciples how to love their neighbor as themselves, the one who invited the outsider to come in, the one who had set the table for all people was no longer with them. But my friends, the Lord does not exit without an exit plan. He does not just vanish from our lives either, no matter what day, time, or season of life we are in. And thankfully, thankfully, we are never left home alone in the kingdom of God on earth or as it is in heaven. We are never left 
alone with our doubts and fears and passion for the future, a passion that continues to long for a world filled with justice and mercy and grace. You know, maybe I have missed the point of the Lord's response to the disciples altogether. You will receive the power of the Holy Spirit and will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, in Muskegon, in Midland, in New York, in halls of justice, in neighborhoods, and even, even from the confines of your own home. The importance of relationship and community, which God established from the beginning and to which was proclaimed through the suffering love of Christ, are bound together by strands that cannot be broken or separated by distance, by death, by devastation, or even a global pandemic. Our gospel writer today in John reminds us that connectedness, that connectedness in one of his farewell discourses of Jesus. He is about to leave them by way of the cross, and he is interceding on behalf, on behalf of his followers. He is interceding on behalf of you and me. Oh Father, the hour has come. Glorify the Son. Clothe me with splendor and great strength so that the Son, so that I may be glorified in you. And since you have given him, you have given me charge over all living things. Now I may give real and eternal life to all you have given me. In the Greek context of the words eternal life, Jesus is speaking of a life not in the physical sense that is brief and fleeting, a dying and going to heaven, but in a quality of character that operates deep, deep within our souls. That unique quality of God's life at work in us. A life that operates outside of time, inside of time, and beyond time. And guess what? The cyclic nature of this love through Christ, who clothes us with splendor and great strength and never leaves us, he never leaves us alone. We are always one with the Father. Everything is mine. Everything mine is yours and yours mine. And my life, Christ's life, will be on display in us. Is this the time? I believe it is. We are the life of the kingdom now and called to live into our baptism. As disciples of this never-ending, sometimes painful love, we are bound together with the one God at this time and in this place. Yes, this is the time. Amen. We are definitely in this together, unified. And so we sing together, one bread, one body. One bread, one body, one Lord of all.
one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, Some announcements before we turn to prayer. First of all, again, after service today, we'll be celebrating a virtual coffee hour via Zoom. And today we're going to be blessed with the fact that a former intern, uh, Travis Wilson, and his wife, will be, Kristen, will be joining us in Zoom. So please make sure you, you join us. And if you need an invitation, just communicate that to me. It's the last call from you for gifts for the Samaritas homes here in Muskegon. We're still looking for non-perishable food items for Easter candy, candy and perhaps some artwork uh, from children. Once again this week, Tuesday and Thursday, adult education opportunities. These have been great experiences. 11 o'clock on Zoom, we deal with the big thinkers of our time. And then 12 o'clock on Thursday, we study the biblical lessons for the coming weekend. If you'd like to join us, please uh, let me know and I'll make sure you have an invitation. Many of you are asking about the process of our return to uh, life in this building. Please know this is a process and it will take some time. Uh, we have a group of folks who are meeting regularly to talk about what that might look like and what we need to do to be prepared and what people are going to need to do once uh, we do return to the building. Uh, there's a lot that we don't know, uh, and we're waiting for some more direction from leaders like the governor. Uh, we will, without a doubt, start when we re-enter the building with small groups. So be prepared to hear more about these small groups that might be using the facility. These are groups of less than 10 people. And it is expected at this point, although again, we don't know for sure, that that process probably will begin at the beginning of, uh, of June. So just be prepared to hear more. I will be sending a letter off to all of you and we'll have lots of information on uh, the internet uh, for you so you know what is going to happen and when it's going to happen. I'm going to call Paula forth to lead us in prayer. Let us prepare our hearts for prayer as we come humbly before God, praying for the whole church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we give you thanks for this day and for the precious gift of life. Grant that we may come to know that our questions, concerns, and anxiety in the present time is in the hands of a loving Lord, a Lord who lives in us and through us and tends to us throughout all the seasons in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Author of creation, as the birds of spring usher in a new song and dormant trees unfold into a colorful landscape, let us be ever mindful of the interconnectedness of creation 
And we pray for our land and farmers planting seeds, for the right proportions of rain and sun, and for land suffering from floods or drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. God of all nations, the diversity in which we were created was intended to bring unity, not division. As violence continues to erupt in nearly every corner of creation, help those who hold authority over others. For presidents, governors, and mayors, for generals and officers, for executives and managers, help them, Lord, to lead with attention to the human spirit and justice for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Lord of relationship, we give you thanks for teachers and students as their year draws to a close and where the physical distance still keeps them apart. Guide school districts, colleges, universities, and churches as they navigate through uncharted waters and draw us together again. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. And God of new life, through the water and the word, you have anointed us and claimed us as your children. Renew this promise to all who are celebrating their baptismal anniversaries this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Jesus, tender shepherd, grant your comfort and care to all who are sick and suffering, to those who are struggling with progressive diseases, and to those whose lives have been shattered, by addiction or divorce, and to all the people affected by COVID-19 and catastrophic flooding in the Midland area. Today we pray especially for Ed Bly, Cheryl Hartman, Cammie Crawl, Kim, Jan Laviak, Elise McDonald, Tom Mullinex, Julie Schock, Pastor Ken Steib and Joyce and the twins she is carrying, and all those in care facilities and hospitals, and for those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Everlasting Father, we give you thanks for all the saints who have gone before us and their witness to your faithfulness. May comfort and compassion be constant companions for the family and friends of Lyle Ogilvy. And may they know the peace of your presence today and throughout the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting only in your mercy through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. At this time in our worship, we would normally take an offering. Uh, And so I have before me the offering plate. And the offering plate is the place where we gather up your gifts. There are many gifts that you can offer and do offer to the ministry of the church. Sometimes those gifts are gifts of money. Sometimes they're gifts of talent. Sometimes they're gifts of time. All of those gifts are essential for the operation of the church. We do need your gifts of money. So I do encourage you to think about sending gifts in via the mail, or you can um, become a a regular giver via an app on the cell phone or through our Vanco giving process. If you need to know more information about those things, I would encourage you to call uh, the church office. As we remember the gifts given to us, we also remember the gift of being gathered in a land and among such beauty. And since this is Memorial Day, I'm going to ask that we sing together, O Beautiful for Spacious Guys, a song that sings of the beauty of our land and of the beauty of sacrifice. Oh, 
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our delight, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Easter Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, take and eat, this is my body, given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you and for me. The blood of Christ shed for you and for me. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for all your gifts, the gifts of the land, the gifts of community, the gift of resilience and hope. And we pray that the gift of the body and body and blood of Jesus now may strengthen us for the days ahead. Give us courage. Give us patience. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our final song uh, called Bind Us Together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together. 
May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Stay in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.